In the last video, I installed a stud partition wall to segregate a large space in our bungalow to create an office space for my fiance slash guest bedroom. And in this one, I'll be doing door linings and installing French doors. Just before I get started, I thought I should talk about how I figured out what dimensions to use to build the wall and allow for the right size of door opening for the doors that we ordered. This box represents the size of the room that needed to be filled with the wall and door opening. The doors we bought measure 1,370 millimeters in width by 1,981 millimeters high, and we wanted them right in the center of the wall. The wall frames I built on either side of the door opening in the last video allowed for a 12 millimeter gap on both sides of the doors and at the top for the door linings, which I will be making shortly. And I also left a 12 millimeter gap beneath the doors for airflow through the room. In addition to that, I allowed another two millimeter gap on either side of the doors and also in between the two doors to enable them to swing open and to close. Those gaps will most likely need to be a bit wider than two millimeters in reality, but at the planning stage, I thought it was better that my opening was slightly too small rather than too big, as I can always trim some material from the doors. In the door opening, I now have the framing studs with plasterboard either side, and the stud here is going to act as my door jam, which is what my hinges are going to secure to, so the studs will be what supports the weight of the doors. But I do need to install a door lining. Its purpose will be to hide the edges of the plasterboard and also give a better surface for painting. The width here is about 85 millimeters, but I'm actually going to cut my linings four millimeters wider than that at 89 millimeters for reasons which I'll explain shortly. I'm using some 12 millimeter MDF to make my door linings, which here I'm ripping down to 89 millimeters on my table saw. I'm just using what I had really, often solid wood is used for door linings, usually pine, but MDF door linings are available to buy too. I'm just choosing to make my own, mainly to save money really. I'm cutting the top piece to length with my circular saw first and that piece got glued and brad nailed to the top. And then I could measure and cut my upright pieces to length and secure them in the same way and I'm positioning these pieces with the two millimeters overlapping the plasterboard on each side and that's because the plasterboard I bought was the tapered edge stuff and I chose that because I knew I'd need to fill the joints in between the sheets above the door which me from the future is showing you a glimpse of now. But what I hadn't considered when I bought this stuff is that the tapered edge would throw the angle of my architrave off slightly. And that's the reason why this two millimeter overlap on my door linings is important. It's going to allow the architrave to sit perpendicular to the face of the wall rather than at a slight angle. Why two millimeters? Because when I offered up a straight edge and measured the taper, that's what it measured at the widest point. If I'd have used square edge plasterboard, I wouldn't have needed to cut my linings wider than the thickness of my wall, but it would have made filling the gaps in between the sheets a little bit trickier. Anyway, now let's get those doors hung. First, I marked up the hinge side of the door on both faces. I want my doors to open into the room rather than outwards. So I wanted to make sure I cut my hinges on the correct sides of the doors. I cut a couple of 40 millimeter notches on some scraps of wood to help hold the doors while I work on cutting the hinges. Usually these are used in conjunction with a wooden wedge to lock them in firmly, but I'm not going to bother doing that. These will work fine for what I need to do here. As these doors are glazed, they are quite heavy. So I decided I'd use three hinges per door and I'm going to position one about 150 millimeters from the top of the door, one about 200 millimeters from the bottom and one placed centrally in between those two. First the hinges got offered up and I scribe around them with a knife. And then I can cut a little deeper. I'm marking around it with a pencil just so it's easier to see on camera. I'm going to use my router with a straight bit to cut away most of the material. And first I need to set the cutting depth of the bit to the thickness of the plates on the hinge. And then I can route away the material by hand and I'm just carefully trying to keep as close to the line as possible but not go over it. Then I can use a chisel to clean up the corners. When the hinges are a good fit, I can then mark up and drill pilot holes and secure them in place with screws.
Here I'm ripping some door stops. I made mine 25 millimeters wide and I'm using the same 12 millimeter MDF as I used for the linings. And to mark up where I want to fit them, I'm setting my combination square to the thickness of the doors, which is 40 millimeters. And I can then scribe a line all the way around the lining. And then I glued and nailed those in place too. And then I just offered up the doors to see how close they were looking. The height looked good. I knew I'd need to remove some from the bottom of these doors anyway. I actually want to have at least a 10 millimeter gap at the bottom, mainly for airflow, as bungalows are quite prone to condensation and mold. And that was a problem when we moved in last year. So we got a PIV system fitted, which is in our loft and it pumps fresh air through the property. So it's important to have gaps under all the doors to let the air circulate properly. And by the way, that PIV system works brilliantly. So if anyone watching is considering getting one, do it. Not a sponsor or anything, but it's completely resolved our issues and we wouldn't be without it. Anyway, I decided to get the doors mounted next to see if the width of the opening was okay. So here I'm marking up the hinge locations onto the lining. I can then offer up the hinge and mark around it with a knife. Ideally, I'd use the router again to route out the hinge locations, but as I'd already fitted the door stops, unfortunately I couldn't do that as they would get in the way of the router. What I should have done is routed them first and then fitted the door stops, but it was too late for that, so instead I used a chisel. But that wasn't an issue as MDF is extremely easy to cut and no knots to worry about either, which can be a problem if using pine. I can then drill pilot holes and I'm going to be using screws long enough to go well into the framing timber here as obviously I don't want the weight of the doors hanging on the MDF. I've offered up the first door and the hinges look like they're all going to line up so that's good. I do have a larger gap on this side than in the middle so I think I'm going to take off about five millimeters from that side. The track saw is ideal for this kind of job, so here I'm cutting down 5mm or so at the top, tapering down to nothing on the other side, and then the 12mm off the bottom. I can then use that off cut along with a couple of shims to help lift the door up to the correct height to allow me to secure the hinges. That closed pretty nicely, nice even gaps at the top and the bottom. And I did the same with the second door, making cuts at the bottom and fixed that in place too. So both doors are now fitted. The gap along the top and along the bottom looks good and consistent, but the doors don't quite close together. I need to take off about 10 millimeters at the top and about four or five millimeters at the bottom. But obviously I've got this rebate on the edge of the door, on both doors. So my options are either to take a little bit off this edge and a little bit off this edge, but then I'll have to recut the hinges, or I can take a little bit off this edge and a little bit off this edge and recreate that rebate. And to me, that seems like the best option because this door needs to be painted anyway. And I think it's going to be quicker to do that. So I set up a fence, a piece of plywood, and I used my router with a bearing guided bit to cut a taper of around five millimeters from the rebate at the top of each door, tapering down to about two millimeters at the bottom. And doing that on each door will give me the 10 millimeter clearance at the top and four millimeter clearance at the bottom. I needed to flip the doors in between in order to cut the same amount of material away on each side. And then I can refit the doors to check my progress. And I'm happy with that. I'm not a professional when it comes to fitting doors, so this is within tolerance as far as I'm concerned. Next I can get the latch fitted. Here I'm measuring up a thousand millimeters from the bottom, which is where I want my handles to be. And I ordered this rebated door latch, which is designed for French doors. I must admit, I was a bit apprehensive about fitting this. I've fitted normal door latches before, but this one looked a bit trickier. I started by marking out where the latch would be in order to get it positioned centrally to the thickness of the door. And to remove the bulk of the material, I used the router again, working up to my pencil lines, and I took this in three separate passes, lowering the bit in between to get to the depth needed. I can then mark up a center point for the shaft of the latch. And I chiseled the corners square. So 
So now I have a flat spot for the latch to seat onto. I'm drilling out for the barrel of the latch with a 22mm auger bit. And that left a hole that was a tiny bit too small, so I did some chiseling. And then it fitted nicely. I can then mark up where the handle spindle will need to go. I mark up the position on both sides and then drill from both sides just to make sure it's positioned accurately. First using a small pilot bit and then with a 16mm auger bit. It looked like it lined up nicely. A few taps with a mallet were needed to get the latch seated and then I can secure it in place with screws. Then I can get the door handle fitted and add the plate which just snaps in place. For the other half of the rebated latch I decided I'd try to fit it with the door fitted as it looked relatively straightforward. So here I'm lining it up with the centre mark and marking around it. And again a few passes with a straight bit in the router to get a flat mounting point for the latch to secure to. This looks a bit ugly at the moment but the latch is going to cover up most of this. A bit of clean up with a chisel and then I can mark up the area that needs to be removed to receive the latch. Which I did with a few different drill bits and some chiseling. And I also needed to remove a bit of material for the latch plate. And that's job done. Not a perfectly neat and tidy job, but a little bit of paint and this will be fine. Then I can fit the other handle, which was really simple as this one is more just for aesthetics than actually being functional. I just needed to remove some material and screw it in place. For the slave door, i.e. the one that will usually remain locked, I ordered one of these things. I'm not sure what they're called, but the listing I got it from on eBay calls it a lock, chrome, bathroom, door, toilet, turn, rotate, twist, bolt, privacy, catch, latch, UK. I can fit the main piece to the top of the door now. It also came with this plate to receive the latch, but I'm not going to use that. Instead, I'm going to make an opening for it within the architrave for a more discreet look, and that'll be covered in the next video. So we chose these French doors because we wanted to allow as much natural light as possible to come into our dining room. And also they're the same style of doors that we installed to our living room and entrance hall recently. We really like them and I'm pleased that I managed to get them fitted myself, particularly because this isn't the sort of work that I normally do. In the next video, it'll be on to architraves, skirting boards, filling gaps and decoration. And then I can reveal how the two rooms ended up looking. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so via PayPal for a one-off donation. Or if you'd like to get early access to my videos, some exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos, you can get all of that via Patreon or YouTube channel membership. Links down below in the description box. Thank you for watching.